On today's show, Volkswagen lets the press drive pre-production prototypes for the Volkswagen ID Neo, and the reviews seem pretty good. Tesla launches a new handover procedure that could let you buy a Tesla in just five minutes, and Porsche tells us just how to pronounce the name of its first mass-produced electric car. These stories and more coming next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. We're 100% Kiwi and 50% community owned. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Hi there, folks. I cannot believe it, but it's the last Roundup show of the year. It's now been more than a year since we started making these shows here on the Ecotricity New Zealand channel. And I just want to thank you all for your love and support these past 12 months. Here's to 2019. Finally, after years of claiming it would dominate the electric car world, Volkswagen has more than concept cars to show us. In fact, it's just let journalists drive heavily camouflaged pre-production engineering prototypes for its first long-range electric vehicle, the Volkswagen ID Neo in South Africa. Despite not yet being ready for market, those who got behind the wheel have for the most part been very positive. Praising the car's 150 kilowatt rear wheel drivetrain, it's nicer to drive and roomier than a Golf design, and it's promised 330 kilometer starting range. A Volkswagen says we'll see a production ID Neo by the end of 2019. As stated in a recent interview with 60 Minutes, Tesla CEO Elon Musk isn't discounting the possibility of buying some of the production facilities that General Motors recently announced it would be closing in Canada, the United States and Mexico. This week, Ohio Governor John Kasich reached out to Elon on Twitter, asking him to, quote, call me about that very interview, adding that, quote, there are no better workers than Ohio workers and Lordstown is ready for you. Lordstown, of course, is the home to one of the soon-to-close GM factories. Musk's response? A non-committal, thanks, we'll consider next year. There have been plenty of studies in recent years around the public's impression of autonomous vehicle technology, with younger people tending to be more accepting of autonomous cars than their elders. But as tier one parts supplier Continental shared this week, it's not just age, it's nationality. Conducting a survey in Germany, the United States, China and Japan, it discovered that while Germans and Americans are split on their attitudes to self-driving cars, 89% of Chinese respondents viewed autonomous cars in a positive light. This makes the nation far, far more accepting of self-driving cars than any other country. The tiny single-seat $15,500 solo EV by Canadian firm Electromechanica may not be everyone's cup of tea, but it's just announced the start of series production for the solo EV at its partner manufacturing facility in Chongqing, China. The production solo EVs look far more robust than the pre-production prototype I saw a couple of weeks ago in Portland, Oregon, and have integrated third headlights onto the bonnet in order to comply with US motorcycle regulations. The firm says it already has 23,000 orders for the solo EV and more than 41,000 orders for its two-seat, four-wheel Tofino Roadster. Midweek, Elon Musk presided over the official opening ceremony of the Boring Company's first test tunnel, a one and a bit mile affair passing from the SpaceX lot to just outside a shop where bricks made from the material bored out by the firm's tunnel boring machines will be sold. The event, pretty small in size compared to Tesla events, offered people the chance to ride the length of the tunnel inside a Tesla Model X fitted with special prototype guide wheels to ensure it didn't hit the tunnel sides. Eventually, Musk said, these wheels will be retractable and could be fitted to any autonomous electric car. Eventual tunnel speeds, 150 miles per hour. Shortly after the start of the new year, we and tens of thousands of other media outlets will be heading to CES 2019, where the greatest and latest in consumer gadgets, technology and transportation will be on display. And from the various emails and exchanges we've had so far, it seems that CES 2019 is going to be all about autonomy, with everyone from mainstream automakers to tier one part suppliers and even small startups demonstrating some new computer vision, autonomous safety or driver aid design to get us driving less and relaxing more. We'll be there from January 6th all the way through to the 11th, so stay tuned for coverage from myself, Kate, Erin and Brandon. The California Air Resource Board voted unanimously last week to set in place new regulations that would require all transit buses in the state to be zero emission by 2029, with all bus fleets to be 100% emission-free by 2040. 
Carb says that currently 40% of California's CO2 gas emissions and 80 to 90% of smog forming particulates come for its transportation sector. It also says mandating the use of electric and hydrogen fuel cell buses will cut greenhouse gas emissions by 19 million metric tons between 2020 and 2050. That's the same as taking 4 million cars off the road. Five minutes. That's how long Tesla wants it to take you to walk into a Tesla store, complete the paperwork and drive out in a new Tesla. It's all part of a new streamlined delivery process that Tesla is bringing online in order to get as many cars to customers as possible before the end of this year. Sadly, the five minute handover only works if you're paying cash, leasing from Tesla or using Tesla's own financing. But this sounds like the fastest ever vehicle purchase in history. At the same time, Tesla is now using its Gigafactory One as a delivery center for those in the area, which also include offering factory tours for those customers. Porsche's first long-range mass-produced electric car is a big deal for the company. Having been unveiled as the Mission E prototype, it's now being prepared for a market launch under a new name. You know, the one that begins with T and ends in N. How do you pronounce it, though? Well, for months now, I and many others in the industry have been calling it the Porsche Taycan. But apparently, according to Porsche, which released a new video this week teaching everyone how to say the name, it's Taycan. Where would we be without the internet, eh? This year, we've seen many, many different companies promise a future of zero emission flight, some autonomous and some not. But one company in Israel says it's super close to making an all-electric commuter flight possible. It just needs a final round of funding. Enter Evation Aircraft Limited and its Alice prototype plane. It promises a nine-passenger capacity and a range of up to 650 miles from a single charge. It promises a running cost of $200 per flight hour versus the $1,000 for a turboprop. But, says Aviation, it needs another $200 million of investment to turn its proven prototype into a production aircraft. And finally, Tesla has historically always been known for being pretty good with warranty repairs and claims. So when a customer claimed back in December 2014 that his Tesla Model S had burst into flames while driving it home from the Tesla store, Tesla quickly took the car back offered the customer a deal to take care of his loan and get him in a new car with a free extended warranty as quickly as possible. Except, as the folks at Electrek found out this week, shortly after the investigation into the fire began, Tesla found the cause of a fire. A thermal event triggered when a bullet had been fired into the battery pack from within the vehicle. A lawsuit followed, but the message is pretty clear. Bullets and batteries do not mix. And on that note, I'm going to say goodbye. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Tell your friends about the show. And if you've got some feedback, please, please send it our way. In the meantime, I wish you a very happy holiday. Enjoy the new year. And I'll be back in January with more Ecotech goodness. To make sure you don't miss out, why not hit the bell below and you'll get a notification when there's a new episode. And to start the new year, why not switch to New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company? Go on, ditch those emissions for 2019 and go Carbon Zero. Thanks for joining me. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite, and see you next time.